All right, here's an example using the sine of the double angle and the cosine of a double angle. Um, in this case, we're given that tangent of some angle is equal to negative 3 sevenths, and sine of theta is, when you see greater and equal to zero, this portion right here, you have to say the word um, positive, because otherwise it becomes kind of difficult to figure out what they're talking about. So here, you're basically going to read this as tangent of theta is negative, and sine of theta is positive. So which quadrant is tangent of theta negative? Well, tangent of negative is theta, uh, tangent of an angle is negative in the second and fourth quadrants. All students take calculus. Um, I write that in there. All students take calculus. All right. So tangent is negative in these two quadrants. Here it's saying sine is positive. Well, out of these two quadrants, the only quadrant where sine is positive is the second quadrant. So where I'm going to draw this triangle is going to be in the second quadrant. So this will be my reference triangle. And let's see if I can get it drawn. Yeah, it's decent enough. It's a little bit off. All right. And then we're just going to label the sides like um, earlier. So here we have tangent of an angle is negative 3 over 7, and tangent it is itself opposite over adjacent. So if this is our reference angle, so opposite would be here, this would be 3. It's not going to get the negative because it's going straight up. The adjacent is 7, but this is going to get the 7, negative 7, because it's going to the left. So all we have to do is find out what the third side is. So let me get rid of some stuff here, kind of in the way. Okay. So we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, where C is the hypotenuse. So what we're looking for is a hypotenuse. So C squared is equal to 3 squared and negative 7 squared. Well, 3 squared is 9, and negative 7 squared will always be positive because it's being squared, is 49. So c is going to equal the square root of 58. So this side would be the square root of 58. Oops, there we go. All right, so now we want to find sine of 2 theta. Well, sine of 2 theta has this nice little formula up here. So we'll say sine of 2 theta is going to equal 2 sine theta cosine theta. So instead of dealing with the double angle, we can break it down into a single angle that we can calculate using this triangle. All right, so 2 is not going anywhere. Sine of theta and cosine of theta is what we're going to be looking for. So this reference angle here is theta. Well, obviously this is theta, but we're going to use the reference angle for theta. And it'll work out because we put the sines on the triangle. So sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So it's 3 over the square root of 58. And then cosine of theta, back to our angle here, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be negative 7 over the square root of 58. And after multiplying that all together, we're going to get uh, 6 times 7, which is going to give us negative 42, over... And the square root of 58 times the square root of 58 is just plain old 58. So the sine of twice whatever the heck the angle is here is going to equal negative 42 58s. All right. Similarly, we could do, if we wanted to, the cosine of double angle. Now there's three formulas for the cosine of a double angle. I just chose one of them. I like um, this one because it has just the cosine function involved and not the sine function involved. Uh, remember there's one with cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, and then the other one would be one minus two sine squared theta. I could have used that one also. Um, I just chose this one randomly, and also because it only has one function rather than two. So if I did cosine of a double angle, I'm not gonna write it all down, it would equal two times the cosine of the angle squared minus one. And the important part here is remembering to put this square here. Because in the formula itself, it's kind of tucked in here between the cosine and the theta. 
but that's a shortcut notation for this whole thing being squared. Um, so you have to remember to put the parentheses and put the square on the outside. So what we're looking for is the cosine of theta. Well, the cosine of this angle is negative 7 over square root of 58. And if we square it, it becomes positive 49. Uh, 49 times 2 is 98. So this would be 98 over 58 minus 1, which is also known as 58 over 58. So this would leave us 40 over 58. So the cosine of this double angle, the ratio would be 40 over 58. So that's how you would use um, the formulas according to a given uh, ratio associated with an angle. All right, here's an example of how to use um, the double angle formulas uh, given certain angles. So what you have to do is kind of recognize what we're given. So in this case, when you look at this, this looks like 2 sine of an angle, we'll call it theta, um, times cosine of angle, where theta itself is this 3 pi over 8. So this formula, 2 sine theta cosine theta, is the double angle for the sine. So this is equal to uh, sine of twice theta. So what we can do here is we can replace all of this mess here on the left, those two sine of the angle, cosine of the angle, with just sine of two times the angle, which happens to be 3 pi over 8. So this becomes sine of 3 pi over 4, which is basically the sine of 45 degrees. So the answer is going to be square root of 2 over 2. We're just not sure if it's positive or negative. So we have to look at what the location of 3 pi over 4 is. So the location of 3 pi over 4, the 4 in the bottom telling you to cut the top into 4 pieces, the third piece would be over here in the uh, second quadrant. So the sine of the square root of 2 over 2, we would have 1 there and square root of 2 there and negative 1 down there. Since this is a sine, it's going to be positive. So the answer to this whole thing is square root of 2 over 2. So 2 sine of 3 pi over 8 times cosine of 3 pi over 8 is equal to square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so what about this one down here? Well, this is one of the three formulas for cosine of the double angle. 1 minus 2 sine squared of some angle is equal to cosine of twice the angle. And the angle here is 112.5 degrees. So we're going to change this into cosine of 2 times 112.5 degrees, which is better known as cosine of 225. 225 degrees. Now 225's location, if we draw a little quick picture, um, this is 0 to 180 and this down here is 270 so this is an angle that happens to be in the third quadrant. Cosine in the third quadrant is negative. All students take calculus. Um, so the answer is guaranteed to be negative. Now we just got to figure out what the reference angle is. Well it's past 180 a certain amount, so that would be 225 minus 180 for a grand total of, oh, another 45 degree angle. So this would be cosine of 45 degrees, and we already said that in this quadrant it happens to be negative, so this would again, well, in this case would be negative square root of 2 over 2 as the answer. So that's how you use um, recognition to go from an ugly mess to a much simpler mess.